Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going for a super quick and easy overview of Pavlovian conditioning, first described by Ivan Pavlov, or as it is often called, classical conditioning. Classical because, well, who doesn't love a classic? And conditioning, which is just another word for learning. I know how confusing it can be to get used to the learning lingo, but one thing that helps me is to remember that conditioning is just another word for learning. Anytime you see conditioning or conditioned, you can just swap in the word learning or learned, and it will all make sense. The second thing to know is that psychologists make a distinction between stimuli and responses. Stimuli are things you can sense in your environment. Responses are your behavior towards those things. A puff of air stimulus to your eyeball might result in a blink in response. A taco stimulus might cause your mouth to water in response. Or a funky drum riff might cause some sort of response, I don't know. Anyway, in classical conditioning, we'll be looking at stimuli and responses, which we'll label using S for stimulus and R for response. Two things, you can remember two things, easy. The next thing to know is that classical conditioning involves things, stimuli, that you already know or care about and you already have a response for. We call these unconditioned because you don't need to learn about them. Their relationship is already in place. Salt could cause salivation or a loud noise might cause you to jump. We'll use the letter U for unconditioned. So these are unconditioned stimuli and unconditioned responses, U.S.'s or U.R.'s. A quick note, some weirdos use U.C.S. for unconditioned stimulus, but that extra C is wholly unnecessary and confusing. So tell those losers to take that C and shove it in a <laughs> blow it up your <laughs> until it's <laughs> like a <laughs> chicken. <laughs> Sorry about that, I get carried away sometimes. Anyway, so now we've got our unconditioned stimulus and response, U.S. and U.R. But that don't a learn and make. We need something to learn about or condition. So now let's take a new stimulus, which we'll call the conditioned stimulus, CS, and pair it with the U.S. The CS is just a signal that provides information about when the U.S. is about to happen. Lightning is a CS that tells you thunder is coming. A smell of baking cookies might tell you that there are cookies around to be eaten. Once you learn the association between the CS and the U.S., presenting the CS by itself might elicit a response, a learned response or conditioned response. You can probably guess what we're going to call this, the CR. If you salivate to the smell of cookies, that's a CR. If you cover your ears when lightning strikes, that's a CR. If that funky riff from the intro had any impact on you, that, that was probably a CR. A lot of times you'll see examples where both the conditioned and unconditioned responses are the same. For example, the UR might be that a dog salivates when food enters the room, and a CR might be salivation to a sound that predicts food. The UR is salivation, but the CR is also salivation. But this isn't always the case. Sometimes CRs and URs can be different. If you run into your ex at the mall, an unconditioned stimulus, then you might politely say hello, you know, but in a way that says, I've moved on and I'm too good for you anyway, so move along, Buster Brown. There's a lap somewhere that's missing its dog. That would be an unconditioned emotional response. However, if you heard their voice before you saw them, you might instead go into stealth mode, ducking behind a plant so you can avoid them. The conditioned response, avoidance, was very different from the unconditioned response. This is especially noticeable in fear and avoidance learning. So what makes a good CS and US? In theory, any stimulus can be a US and anything can be a CS. Usually start with a US that is meaningful in some way and produces a behavior of some sort. We call good things like food, money, sex, or other rewards appetitive and bad things like pain, shock, or loss of rewards, aversive. We typically use examples where the CS starts off as neutral and becomes appetitive or aversive by virtue of its pairing with the US. However, you could also have a CS that already means something, and its meaning might change. Maybe you have a favorite song, but you listen to it a lot with your ex, so you associate it with them. Now you don't like it as much. We would call that 
counter conditioning since the meaning of the CS was countered or reversed by the conditioning. Appetitive becomes aversive, aversive becomes appetitive. But whether something is a CS or a US is dependent on its relationship to the other stimuli and the kind of information being learned. As an example, lightning could be a CS for thunder as a US because the lightning lets you predict the thunder, as I mentioned earlier. But thunder could also be a CS for something else. Thunder could be a CS for your scared dog peeing on the floor. You might learn that the thunder CS signals that your dog is going to pee, a US, so you learn to try and calm the dog down and make sure they're on a tile floor, a conditioned response. It's the role that each stimulus or response plays in this overall framework that determines whether it's a CS or a US. Think about how important it is to make predictions about things that will happen in your environment. If you can predict a predator attack, or that food will be available, or that there will be a mating opportunity, you're gonna be more successful than someone who can't. This creates a strong selective pressure and classical conditioning has been observed in species with even very primitive nervous systems like sea anemones. Classical conditioning is likely to be the reason that nervous systems are such useful things to have in the first place. That's the power of classical conditioning. Okay, there's a lot more we can go into on this. It's been studied for over a hundred years and there's still things we're learning about classical conditioning, but there's the basics. If you like this video, feel free to hit the like button, check out some of our other videos and subscribe to help us grow our channel. And I'll have more on learning coming up and until next time, keep thinking. If you were familiar with the riff in the beginning, I, uh, I have just a video for you. It'll pop up here in just a second. You'll know it when you see it.